Hi, my name is Mike. I'm a technical account manager here at XBeam. Today, I'll be showing you how to incorporate variable rule scoring into your advanced analytics platform. So from the start, um, we're going to want an example of sorts to work with. So I was looking around in our demo instance, and I noticed user Frederick Weber has fired off a CrowdStrike alert. Now, typically, when we're using variable rule scoring, it is so that we can make rules trigger for different scores depending on a value in a field. For here, we have the security alert rule, which triggers whenever a security alert is seen from a third party vendor. We want to change it so that when we see a security alert from CrowdStrike, we make the user instantly notable with a score of 90 as opposed to 40. Let's show how, how, how we can do that. So we're going to go into our settings, go to our XBeam rules, and we're going to find the rule that we're looking for. In this case, if I hit rule definition, it's going to be this alert VPN, rule ID. So I'm going to copy and paste that. OK, open up my advanced editor. Now I'm here. So the field that we're going to be messing with is going to be the score equals. Um, right now, it's just showing a float value of 10. But we can introduce logic in here to score differently depending on what value we see. For the first example, we will be using a contains function. Contains is a commonly used function in rule expressions where it will look for, in this case, the field alert name and compare the string noisy to see if this string exists in this field. If this evaluates true, we will assign a score of one. Otherwise, we're going to give it the usual score of 20. Now, following that up, we can chain these if statements to each other to now make it an else if. So in the second example, if our alert severity is equal to the value zero, we will assign a score of zero. Else if the alert severity is equal to one, assign a score of 15. Else if two, 25. Else if three, 35, so on and so forth until we get to the else 25 at the end. Finally, you can use double pipes as an or statement in when performing these comparisons. So you can say, if my alert severity is equal to low or this field is equal to one, assign a score of 10. Likewise, if it's medium or two, give it a 20, and so on. So we're going to have this say if contains vendor field and CrowdStrike score is 90. Then, if it isn't vendor equals CrowdStrike and it's anything else, give it a score of 20. So this logic right here, when this rule triggers, it will go and look in the vendor field, see if it equals CrowdStrike. If it does, it's going to give it a score of 90. If it doesn't, it's going to use the same anchor score of 20 that we've been using this whole time. Now, there are multiple ways which we can do this. We could also, we go to the view logs. We could also target other fields. Instead of using the vendor field, we could have said, hey, if you see the source is equal to CrowdStrike Falcon, or you see the source host came from FWeber's asset, give it these scores. Now, one caveat to note when you're doing variable rule scoring, and you'll notice these fields are highlighted in green, 
is that you can only variable rule score using fields that have been persisted. Persisted event fields means their values have been persisted in the database in the back end and they can be referenceable within the score expression. Um, so while I was using vendor down here, I could also use source, alert severity, malware URL, process, any of these that are highlighted. So if I bring us back here and I open up our rule again, we could put in logic to say, instead of looking at vendor, we could say if the alert severity equals I give it a score of 50, for example. Oops. And then if the alert severity medium, we'll give it a score of, oh, I don't know, 25. Why not? And counting parentheses, one, two. Yep. Okay. That's always the funnest part. Um, now, with this logic, when this rule triggers, it will look at the alert severity field. And depending on what value it sees in there, um, it will score 50 if it's high, 25 if it's a medium, 10 otherwise. While it's saving, we can just take a look at some other examples, other places you can use this. Quite typically, I find a lot of success using this with the security alert rules, trying to um, change the scores based on the source that it comes from. Like typically I don't care as much about my firewall sources or my DNS sources as they're really noisy compared to my endpoint detection and response agent like CrowdStrike. Um, so as another example, we have this user Sherry Lee who has Ransomware firing off on the host. Um, email from competitive domain, first execution of process. What we could say is, um, for instance, with these first execution of processes, we see one of them is tor.exe. So in the future, if we wanted, we could have this rule say if the process name, let's go pull that rule up real quick. There's execution of the process. We can do it. Process underscore name equals four dot exe. Yeah, a score of 50, because no one should be running that in our environment. Otherwise, typical score of three. Now we are able to use that because when I go into the timeline and I go look at this rule, view the logs, I see this process name field here, highlighted green, it's persisted. I'm good to use it in my variable scoring expression. And with that, we conclude our session on variable rule scoring. You can find more helpful webinars and documentation on how to best implement this in your environment on our community site, as well as our documentation site, docs.exabeam.com. Thank you, and I hope you have a lovely rest of your day.